Hey, look at that. The texturing process has been finished, and by the time I'm publishing this video, I've already posted this as a project to my portfolio, accompanied with some really nice Marmoset tool bag renders and a little test scene that I made in Unreal Engine 5. However, in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can get some portfolio quality renders like these without Marmoset tool bag, simply using Blender and the EV real time renderer. So hopping over to Blender, we are now at the point where we've finished all our modeling and now we've finished all our texturing. So the first thing we need to do is compile all our materials in Blender so we can set them up for our final renders. And I know what you're thinking. What? Really? A material setup video for Blender? Isn't that just kind of basic? Are you really basic? And I say, shut up. Yes, this video is very basic and it's more aimed towards beginners, but I also got a few extra tips in here to help make your models look extra beautiful for when you're trying to render in Blender EV. So, okay, let's jump into it. And as usual, if you're having any technical difficulties with any part of this video, or you just want to receive some feedback on a project that you're working on, then please consider joining the Discord server linked in the description below, where there's a community of people who would be happy to offer you any advice on any projects that you're working on. So over here, I have my texture exports from Substance Painter, and I exported my textures to be appropriate for Unreal Engine, which means that for each material, the bayonet, the main gun, and the magazine, I have three texture maps. This includes the base color, the normal map, and an RGB channels texture, which has the ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic all packed into separate RGB channels. And since this texture map is packed in that order of ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic, it's often referred to as an arms texture. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to drag off a new panel here. Let's go to our shader editor. And here in the viewport, I'm already in the texture shader viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off all the overlays so I'm not distracted by things like the little armature that I created for the bipod. All right, so I have my material selected, which is the material for the main gun. And let's go ahead and drop in our texture maps. So this is my base color. This is the arms texture, which has our ambient roughness and metallic. And this is our normal map. Now make sure when you drop in your normal map that it's switched from sRGB to non-color data. All right. So next, let's go for the process of creating some utility nodes, which will help to translate our texture maps onto our material. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to create a separate RGB node, and I'm going to plug in our arms texture map into that. This way I can access and separate all those individual texture channels from the arms texture map. So the red is our ambient occlusion, and I want to add that on top of our base color. So I'm going to add in a mix RGB node. I'm going to switch that to multiply. I'm going to make a little bit more space here so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so that's switched to multiply, and I'm going to increase the factor to 1, and I'll plug in both of our base color and the red output, which is our ambient occlusion. All right, good. So now let's hook up what we can from our texture maps onto our material shader. So this will go into the base color, and that has our base color and ambient occlusion added together. The green is our roughness channel, can go right into the roughness slot, and the blue is the metallic. Okay, now let's go ahead and create our normal map node, which we will plug in our normal texture. The normal map node is set to tangent space, which is good, and that'll go into the normal input on our shader. All right, now you might think that things are looking all right, but once you go ahead and start creating a scene, you're going to notice that, yeah, things don't look quite right. For one, we exported Unreal Engine texture maps out of Substance Painter, and there's a little bit that we have to do to get this to work properly inside of Blender. For one, Unreal Engine uses a DirectX normal lighting workspace, and Blender and Unity, for that matter, use an OpenGL. Well, what's the difference? It has to do with the light direction, primarily light that's hitting on the y-axis direction. And in the case of a normal map, that corresponds to the green value. Now, all we have to do is 
flip the green value to make this normal map work correctly. So let's go ahead and create an RGB curves node, and we'll insert that between our texture map and the normal map node. Now go to the green channel, and all you have to do is flip these little handles here. Now, when you're creating any sort of scene using this normal map, you're not going to have any weird lighting issues. And that's looking pretty good, but you might be asking yourself, wow, you know what? My model is looking really shiny. It did not look this shiny in Substance Painter. Heck, you might even notice this if you're trying to compile your materials in Unreal Engine. And that's because we have to create some math to help control the max roughness value of our shader. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a math node. And I'm going to intercept this little green node line that's going from our separate RGB to the roughness value. And as you can see, it looks like we just basically lost all our roughness value. Now let's switch this math node from add to power. And like that, you can probably see that the amount of roughness that you have now matches more or less what you would have had in Substance Painter when you were texturing. And like that, our material is finished, and we can go ahead and create these utility nodes for our other two materials. But you know what? I'm lazy, and I don't want to do that. Now, I'm not an Unreal Engine expert, but I would assume that if you were creating a material in Unreal Engine, you'd go through the process of creating one master material that has all your nodes and the inputs that you want, and then creating separate instances of that master material so that you could plug in your textures into that without having to rewrite the node graph each and every time. Now, we can't exactly instance materials in Blender just yet, but we can certainly make life a lot easier for ourselves. All right, so what I want to do is select all these little nodes that we created in between our texture maps and our material shader, and I'm going to hit Control G. And now, if we tab out of this, you can see that we just created this fancy little group node. And it has all our little inputs and outputs to our material shader. If we tab into it, we can access all those nodes that we created. We can also customize these group input and group output nodes so that they have easily identifiable labels for all our inputs and outputs. So if we go over here to our little side panel, which you can call up by tapping N, and we go to the group tab, you can see that we can now give all the inputs and outputs their own custom name. So let's go ahead and we know that this is the arms texture. So I'll call that arms. We know that this is the base color. And we know that this is the normal. And you can even change the order of these by clicking these little arrows here. We can also do the same with our outputs. Now you'll also notice that our group inputs and outputs have these empty little node connectors at the bottom. That's because we can actually make our own little custom node connections. So let's say that we want to be able to switch between an OpenGL and a DirectX normal. What we could do is we could take the little factor input from our RGB curves and we can connect it into this empty little node connection at the bottom of our group inputs. Now we can call that flip Y, which corresponds to the green value. And now if we tab out of this, you can see we have this little slider in which we can actually switch between whether or not we're using that RGB curves node. And while we're here, we can go up to the node properties and we can give our custom node group a name. So we can call this Unreal Engine Texture Utilities or something of that sort. And then if we copy and paste this into the properties name, you'll now be able to actually call up this node group when you go into another shader graph. So if I go Shift A and I go to group, well, you can see that I already created one earlier, but here's the node that we just created. And with this node group created, I'll now go into our other two materials, drop in our textures along with our awesome little utility node and make all the necessary connections. And with that, our material setup will be finished. 
In the next video, we're going to cover everything to do with lighting from setting up our HDRI world scene to our area lights and even volumetric fog. So feel free to check out all the social media links in the bio and like and subscribe.